like to pick up any of the figures you see in today's video, go over to ringsidecollectibles.com. Use the promo code MDTOYS to save 10% on all of the brand new and epic WWE Mattel action figures. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to it. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to it. Get it right, you stupid idiot. What is good, everybody? Welcome to an epic My Damn Toys video. Today, we have a two-in-one WWE Elite figure review on the brand new Dolph Ziggler and Finn Balor, both from Elite Series 70. I was super duper hyped for both of these figures. Guys, Elite 70 was a great set, but these are the two that I was the most excited for, Finn Balor and Dolph Ziggler being two of my favorite wrestlers in the entire world. You guys know that if you're fans of the channel. If you're not a fan of the channel, well, then uh, I guess you're missing out on some pretty epic content around here, but let's go ahead and dive right Right in guys you know uh, we were this this figure right here is very special to the channel you guys know we covered this figure months and months in advance before it was released we did like a hundred news things on it we were talking about it and you remember we were talking about it we said if they release this NXT TakeOver London uh, Jack the Ripper Finn Balor with the Daniel Bryan torso if they would have given us this torso right here guys if this was the torso they went with then I would have had to upload a video of me crying in the corner and I don't know what I would have done with myself but here it is in the flesh guys that showed it off at Comic-Con. It did have the ripped up torso. It was a freaking happy day. I was super excited and it was just so magnificent, man. I could just cry thinking about this Finn Balor figure. Here it is in the flesh and now we get to finally review it here on the channel and I'm freaking hyped for it. So let's go ahead and dive right in, guys. My boy Ziggler has a new head scan. We're going to get into it. Let's just shut the hell up and get to reviewing figures. So if we spin them to the right, you guys know how we do. They do have their names on the side. Flipping it on the back, you have a beautiful picture of Ziggler and you have a beautiful picture picture of the demon Finn Balor here in NXT with his championship is Jack the Ripper face. You have the rest of the wave. You also have a little buy-up for each. If you'd like to read it, you can pause it right now. Spinning it around the rest of the way, you have a beautiful image of the demon and Ziggler. And that is it for the packaging, guys. Of course, you have your front viewing window with all the accessories that they come with. And that is it. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get our freaking hands on this Jack the Ripper Balor and this beautiful new Dolph Ziggler. So here's Dolph Ziggler and Finn Balor out of their magnificent packaging, guys. Looking, looking just freaking fantastic. I'm very, very excited about them. Just at first glance, taking them out of the packaging, looking at them up close with their beautiful accessories. We're going to take you through every single detail of these figures from their accessories, their head sculpts, all the things included with the figures. And I'm just super hyped for it, man. They just look so great. I cannot wait to dive into it. There are some inaccuracies about both of them that we will get into, and I'm going to break down everything you need to know about the figures themselves. So what we're going to do for our process, guys, is we're going to take you through Dolph Ziggler's accessories and then Dolph Ziggler, and then we'll take you through Finn Balor's accessories and then Finn Balor. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into figure number one. So starting off with Dolph Ziggler's accessories, guys, getting into it, we have this beautiful cloth jacket, and I'm just excited that they use cloth, you know? They could have easily given us some crappy rubber jacket where he couldn't move his arms, he couldn't put him down by his sides, but they didn't do that. They actually took care of us this time, and they gave us this beautiful silver jacket that he's worn in the past with that black attire, and the only thing that sucks about these accessories is that it's missing the Intercontinental Championship. I mean, it says in his rivalry against Against Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental title. The show off proves every time it's too bad that he's too good. So why didn't they include the Intercontinental Championship when the Intercontinental Championship is literally plastered on the middle of the attire? I think it would have been a lot better had they included the Intercontinental Championship. Very simple. I mean, we've got it a hundred times in the past. It's just one little gripe I had. But anyways, right here you have his little Dolph Ziggler skull logo and it says Beverly Hills on it with the black collar. Black uh, cuffs on the on the sleeves there on the black. On you, It says Rebel Forever or Rebel Forever, whichever one's got a skull logo and a little star uh, a lot of just heavy metal symbolism going on you know he's a big heavy metal fan and you know classic rock fan and stuff like that so that is the reason he incorporates it all into his gear and stuff like that and for his interchangeable hands we get these wide open you know uh, high five hands or whatever you want to call them it's for his entrance I guess you know when he he slicks back his hair and then like uh, spreads out his fingers for his uh, for his entrance there on the ramp and it looks good it's got his full white wrist tape you know he wears that right now I think he's wearing black just because he's more of I, I don't know why he just kind of switched it up there you know he was a heel during both campaigns so I, I don't know but anyways that is it for Dolph Ziggler's accessories guys so with that being said let's get into Dolph Ziggler himself so getting into Dolph Ziggler himself, guys, starting it off at the top, we have this brand new Dolph Ziggler head scan, and me being as big of a Dolph Ziggler fan as anybody you'll find in the entire world, I like this head scan, man. I really think it captures his likeness. This is definitely the most realistic head scan we've ever gotten. The rest of them have sort of been like cartoony, 
And we'll get into that when we, you know, cover some Dolph Ziggler Elite Figure comparisons. But uh, this one I really do like. I think the likeness is totally there. A lot of people say it may be a bit chubby, and I can kind of see what the, where they're coming from, but it really doesn't bother me that much. I like the hair color they got going on. It's like a sandy blonde mixed in with the brown. Really cool hair mold that they went with. They have the bun on top with the, uh, you know, the, the sort of slick back look. Sort of a combination there. Really nice looking there. They went with the same torso, which I really love for Ziggler. They went with those same jacked arms, which I would have a problem with in the past, but for me, I really don't have a problem with it anymore because I can easily switch it. And it really doesn't look that bad on the figure. Even though it's totally inaccurate, it's really not bothering me for some reason. I don't know why. I, I guess just, I, I don't know. It's just not bothering me like I thought it would, which I do have some basic arms, which we will switch on here. Every Ziggler that I own has the smaller basic arms, so that's not going to be a big deal. But here's what I'm talking about. It's the Intercontinental Championship attire. And uh, while I like this attire, I hear a lot of people in the community, a lot of people in the community are saying, you know, Brad, why in the hell did we get this attire? Well, first of all, they didn't include the Intercontinental Championship. Second of all, now you can only use this figure with Intercontinental Championships. Like, if I put him in the pick fed like this, it's like, what what, what the hell, what belt is that? Like, this, this belt doesn't exist in the MDT universe timeline. So, I don't know, maybe remove this or use this base right here and paint over and, and put my own championship here? I don't know. I mean, that's just something to think about. You know, he's never won a championship in MDT, so, I mean, that wouldn't even make sense, so I don't know. But anyways, you got solid black tights going on. You got the Beverly Hills logo right here. This is one thing I didn't like about this attire. I don't understand why he went with the Beverly Hills logo. Like, he has had many, many attires with, like, the logos spread out over his, uh, over his tights. Like, he'll put one logo here, not this one, typically. Like, sometimes it's the same logo, but sometimes he'll do, like, these same logos on both legs, and then, like, a regular logo here, and then something with a circle, or, like, Hollywood heel, or some stupid stuff on the butt cheeks. But this time he went with, like, Hollywood on this side, Rebel Forever logo circle thing here, the Intercontinental Championship here, and then random logos here. So that's just a bit weird to me, but anyways, I do like the attire, even though it is another black attire. It's the second Elite Ziggler in a row. The Chase variant is the, the pink version, which looks so much better. I wish that was the regular version, but what are you going to do? I do need to track that figure down. If anybody has that for trade, hit me up, man. I really want that figure. We'll, we'll work out a deal. But anyways, going down, guys, this is also inaccurate in the boots here. The boots are fine. I wish they would give us a real boot boot flap mold. You'll see in my Elite Figure comparisons in the next portion of the video. Uh, these boot flaps, uh, they, they don't have the straps on it. They just kind of paint the lines on there. And they also, this time, they left off the black outsoles, which I don't understand why. He used to have the black outsoles on every other uh, Dolph Ziggler figure that's, you know, rocked these boots. So I don't know why they changed that when it was already accurate. But nonetheless, beautiful looking Ziggler, man. I really do like it. I really enjoy it. Really beautiful stuff going on with it. And now that we've covered Dolph Ziggler, guys, let's get into some Dolph Ziggler Elite Figure comparisons. All right, guys, so here is my full WWE Elite figure Dolph Ziggler long tights collection. This is every single Dolph Ziggler Elite with long tights. And you can see uh, I pretty much have the same head scan with different hair sculpts for all of these. But you guys can clearly see the difference. I mean, my God, look at the difference in these head sculpts, man. This one is much more realistic. This has got more of a cartoonish look going on. I really don't know how to describe it, but it just kind of looks cartoony, does it not? It just looks cartoony to me. I don't know what it is about it, but it just has like a cartoony looking face. It looks like Dolph Ziggler, but it's just sort of cartoony. But I like it, man. I really like it. Here's the, the arm difference here. This is definitely what I want to go to. It's just much more accurate for Ziggler. Um, but uh, here's the boots. This is what I'm talking about with the boots. You see, this has straps on it. This is what it's supposed to look like. Just boot flaps. They're Velcro straps. And uh, they have black outsoles on it. This is the way this is supposed to be. But see, they just paint the lines on there and leave us that boot strap mold. I think it's been long enough. You know, they give us these head scans. They give us all these things. Why not go ahead and uh, fully sculpt us some new boot molds and stuff of that nature. I think that is, it's about time for all that new stuff as well. So, that is just something else, but uh, this is the rest of my collection, guys. Literally, all the attires you can think of. I don't have all of them, which sucks, but uh, here's what my, this is what my, you know, non-custom looks like. This is with, like, zero paint besides, like, a little bit of pink on here, but uh, this is pretty much uh, Mattel factory made here, and I kind of want to look and see what this uh, hoodie looks like on here. I think it'll look really, really good. So, let's go ahead and place this black hoodie that I've literally had so long guys I think I've had this since like the beginning of my collection like when I first started my channel I had this hoodie and I still rock it to this day and I like it a lot so here is what this figure looks like in the hoodie and holy Christ on a bike guys that looks sick as hell and you know it would be a fantastic fix up if you take this head sculpt and you put this hoodie on here put the IC title on here and then put that one Ziggler basic with the black tape and then put the Elite 39 black Dolph Ziggler boots on here now that would be a fire fix up that may be 
some, I have two of these, so I think I'm going to do that. I think that would be badassery, so maybe we can do that on action figure surgery. That's just something I'm thinking right now. But that is the rest of my WWE Dolph Ziggler long tights collection, guys. What do you guys think down below? I think it would have been sick to get a colorful attire, but the black that I have here fits in nicely with the rest of my custom, you know, colorful attires. But now that we've done that, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at Elite 70 Finn Balor's accessories. So getting into Finn Balor's accessories, guys, really excited for these. Just like Dolph Ziggler, they gave us cloth accessories, which is good. Obviously, just the jacket here, not the hat here. But let's go ahead and get into the hands first. These are his hands, and the ones that come with the figure are the open hands, you know, regular, just, you know, just chilling hands. And I'm very glad that they gave him the ones that did. They didn't give him the choke slamming hands, which I'm very excited for. I like it when he has just regular mic holding hands, not choke slam hands. Uh, but here we have like the Daniel Bryan or like people call it like the, I, I call it the throne sitting hands. Like if you were sitting on a throne like Thanos, you know, this is how you would grasp the side of the throne like this right here. It's got the taped up fingers and stuff. I guess this is what we're doing for his entrance now. You know, usually they give us the wide open like the Ziggler ones we just reviewed, but this time they went with this one. And I, I like both, you know, either one's work for me. And you know, you can call it like the Kamehameha hands maybe, you know, cause he cups it like this a little bit. So I don't know. I like them a lot, you know, nothing too crazy, nothing too whatever. I'm just glad they included the taped on there. Next up we have his entrance jacket and I thought this was the same mold as the Defining Moment Sting mold. You guys know that people put on their Kenny Omegas. I used it for my Punisher Jeff Hardy custom and actually they did not. This is actually a new mold. This is actually I think a little bit shorter. This part's a little bit longer. Uh, just looking at it. I didn't bring down the figure but just kind of looking at it from here. I could be totally wrong. People are probably like you're a stupid jackass but I'm pretty sure that this is shorter in the bag. This is a longer piece and it's nice. It, it's pliable. The only thing I have a problem with is this is kind of like obnoxious a little bit bit. I think that, that maybe this could have sat a little bit better, but nothing nothing too crazy. I like it. It's cloth, and I'm not going to complain. Next up, we have the hat mold, and you guys know he was supposed to be, uh, you know, be Jack the Ripper. That's sort of the name of this demon attire. He has, like, Jack the Ripper. He's got the London clock tower on his back. Jack the Ripper was known for, you know, wearing this top hat, and so he wore this to the ring, and uh, the only thing they got wrong is that this is supposed to be brown, not black, and uh, he has his obvious, his headdress is sort of coming out of it, and I really like this. It conforms to the face, and you know, it's, I like it a lot. It's a really nice accessory. Again, I'll probably paint this up on action figure surgery, give it a brown color. Uh, I think it may have had like some gold shimmer around the brim, and uh, we'll probably do that. We'll probably do that on action figure surgery or something as well. You know, how like when we always get a new Elite Series wave, we always put them all in action figure surgery and toughen them up and fix them up and stuff like that, so you guys can do the same thing with yours. We show how to uh, make those Elite waves better, so that's just something we do. But, anyways, guys, that is it for Finn Balor's accessories. So now that we have covered his accessories. Let's dive into the demon Finn Balor himself. So taking a closer look at Finn Balor himself, guys, taking a look at this head scan, and on paper, I really think this head scan works on paper, like the idea of it, of it having a grimacing head scan or something, but for me, in my personal opinion, I honestly, I don't know if I like this head sculpt. I don't think I do. I don't feel like the true effects is there. Does it, it says true effects technology, but I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. If I can, I'll bring a picture of Finn Balor, like grimacing or whatever you want to call this face, and I don't know, man. I'm just not feeling it. I don't know. I just don't see Finn Balor. It's like the hair shape or the head shape or the something is off about this head sculpt and I don't know what it is. They also uh, put too much black paint around the eyes and the forehead. As you can see on the back of the box, um, his uh, his face actually doesn't have uh, this much black paint on it and the red is a bit too dark on the whole figure compared to uh, the actual paint that he wore on the night, but uh, you can't really ca tell on camera that much, but in person it is a little bit darker than it's appearing on camera. But I don't know, man. The head sculpt, I like the idea. Again, the grimacing, like, pissed off face I love for the demon. I think that's awesome. I just don't know if this looks like Finn Balor to me, and I think the haircut is too short or something. I'll have to go back and look, um, and I'll try to pull a picture so you guys can see. I do love the fade haircut they got going on, but yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm not a fan of the head sculpt. However, going down in the rest of the figure, I love the paint detail we're getting, all the teeth. This is one of my favorite demon designs. Again, I really like this one a lot. I love the way the red trickles down and stuff. Obviously, with Mattel factory paint, they can't necessarily get all the fade jobs and the stuff that airbrush can really do in real life when you're airbrushing body paint onto somebody, but I think they do a really good job anyways. I really like it, um, and they included the freaking ripped up torso, which is something I'll never complain about with a Finn Balor figure. I love the ripped up torso. It's accurate. It's beautiful. This 
is what we like to see. We love to see the ripped up torso. Thank you for making me not have to cry. But that is it for the stomach. You got the ripped up abs. You got the beautiful sleeves. You have the, uh, the mic holding hands. You got the nice tights on there. Here is where the money is made, guys. On the back, you can see the back graphic. And one thing that they did with this is they actually laminated this. I just noticed, um, and I think my boy Steinsenberg Customs live video, uh, they actually laminated this onto the back of the figure. So th you don't have to worry about this chipping off. I literally don't think you could chip this off. I don't think you could acetone this off. This is literally imprinted in the figure. It's a part of him forever. It's never coming off. So that is something that's really cool. I think they nailed the back design. I love the clock tower, the Jack the Ripper demon there smiling. Really sweet stuff. Love the tights. Love the, uh, the, the details going down. They even got the leg paint correct. You got the black going down. And here's the knee pads. And another thing, I don't think these knee pads are accurate. I could be wrong. I'll pull up pictures if I can. But I think these knee pads are a little bit off. Uh, going down into the kick pads, you have the flamey type demon design on the left. All black kick pad on the right. And I may have to uh, paint up the outsoles just to give it a little bit more flair and make it more accurate because I'm a massive Finn Balor mark and that's what I do. But that is it for the demon, man. It looks great. It looks really good except for that head sculpt. Don't know what it is. Just don't know what it is. I, I just don't see Finn Balor when I look at it. Maybe it'll grow on me, but for right now I'm not a fan and maybe I can paint it up. I don't know. But anyways, that is it for the in-depth look at the Finn Balor Elite figure of Elite 70, guys. So now that we've done that, let's get into some other Mattel Elite Finn Balor Demon action figures. So taking a closer look at some Mattel Elite Finn Balor Demon figure comparisons, guys. Here it is, the brand new Elite 70 up next to the rest. You have the Entrance Greats Finn Balor Elite. You have the Toys R Us Exclusive Network Spotlight Finn Balor. You have the SummerSlam 2016 Elite Finn Balor. You have the Elite 46, the Elite 59, and the Elite 41. And what all of these three here in the middle, the Elite 70, the Entrance Greats, and the Network Spotlight all have in common is that they have the beautiful ripped up torso for Finn Balor, and that is what I love. I Honestly, what I want to do with the rest of my Finn Balors that don't have the ripped up torso, which is just these. These are the only ones in my collections, the, the Mattel ones. Um, what I want to do with those is I literally want to crack the torsos, replace them with a Top Talents torso, and then repaint their designs onto their torso and replace them just so they'll have the ripped up torso with the, you know, with all the accurate demon paint. That's literally something I want to do. That would probably be really, that'd probably be psychopath-like, but I really do want to do that. But this is obviously not the rest of my demon collection. This is just the Mattel demons because I didn't want to get down every single one of my demons because that it's it's a it's a lot it's it's a lot but as you can see I really think that this is the best head sculpt like the one they used on the Elite 41 I really like that was way before uh, you know the the True Effects technology the one they use on the entrance grates I hate that they use the goofy smiling face for the network spotlight but even then I still think this has a much better resemblance to Finn Balor than this I don't know what it is man just just you'll hear me say it a lot I I don't know what it is but that pretty much does it for your Mattel Demon Finn Balor Elite figure comparisons. But that pretty much does it for this 2-in-1 Elite Series 70 review on the brand new NXT TakeOver London Finn Balor and Dolph Ziggler. Guys, again, I really do enjoy both of them. Both of them are freaking epic sauce. We're going to get in here and do some action figure surgery, make them even more epic sauce. Again, I don't like the Finn Balor head scan that much. Again, I'm sure it'll grow on me. Maybe if I customize it a little bit, make it a little bit better. But for the most part, I do love the figure. Maybe it just takes off a couple points with the head sculpt. I just don't know what that is. I'll figure it out and I'll figure it out, man. But for now it is going to get a little bit of points deducted as hyped as I was about the figure. As far as Dolph Ziggler is concerned, I love it. I, I really do love this Dolph Ziggler. You know, minus, you know, the, the arm size and then the, the outsoles of the boots, you know, things that can be easily fixed. I really love the new head sculpt. I love the hair mold. I love the just, it just feels so good to have a new Dolph Ziggler as big of a fan as I am of the guy and it's just great stuff, man. So if you want to pick up either of these figures, guys, go over to ringsidecollectibles.com Use the promo code MDTOYS, and I want to give a huge shout out to them because they are what make all of these epic reviews and all these awesome videos possible, and we would not be anything without them. So I want to give a huge shout out to them. Definitely go over there and pick up all of the awesome WWE Mattel action figure products that they have to offer with play sets, figures, epic pre-orders, all the stuff. Go over there, use the promo code, and save some money and pick up these epic figures. But I believe that is going to do it for this two-in-one action figure review, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. We have the rest of the wave coming in the next few days as well some other videos and some action figure surgery coming soon with all of them if you guys don't care if i post the action figure surgery after reviewing the figures then that is you know cool with me maybe i can uh post up surgery tomorrow or the next day and we can uh, have the rest of the reviews later or if you guys would rather prefer surgery after the reviews then uh i would really appreciate if you guys would let me know 
Also, check out yesterday's video from uh, Face Wife doing an action figure guessing game with the WWE figures while she was blindfolded. We got in there in the kitchen, in my damn kitchen, and we freaking whipped it up. And uh, she, it was, it was entertaining to say the least. So definitely go check out that video. I'd really appreciate it. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.